Okay. Ash. Red. <laughs> I like games. Welcome. All right. Man, I didn't even realize. Oh, that's a lot. Disruptor 12, Pog Gun 12. Damn. I am Delta. Delta from Scape's Discord. Ah, okay. Let's see. I'm not sure I've talked to you too much. There. But it sounds familiar. Ultra. Matthew. Stalker. No one a name. Welcome. Hope you've been having a glorious day. Uh, I woke up very late. And I started the stream kind of late, so. <laughs> I, I slept in, so yeah, it's, it's not too bad. Been catching up on some sleep, sleep lately. How good is Stormwreck? Uh, it's top five weapon for sure. Very, very good. Well, your voice sounds so scratchy. Hey, I mean, I'm not going to change it, but it kind of kind of just is what it is. Every time I cry out for help, all I can say is barbecue bacon burger. That's so sad. It's noted. They're about the same as Railgun, I was told. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I would say Railgun's slightly better. But anyway. You see the title. You presumably saw the thumbnail. So we are going to start them right now. Let me see if I can pin a thing. First, let me just let me do this. Can I pin it? I can. Okay. So I'll just remove it instead. Put your ID. Well, I should say Macarena. There we go, now I can pin that. I recall that, for whatever reason, I couldn't pin my own messages for a while. <clears throat> Do you think the Solus Crate Rush is worth it? No. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys what I think. I think, if you don't get this, if it is not a flat rate, which this, by the way, is never worthwhile. Uh, if you ever see a Crate Rush with blueprints and credits, or if you ever see a crate rush with, um, let's say, A coins and credits, like a only if it's only resources, if it's only something that you can buy with credits or with A coins, or it is just straight up A coins, never spin it. Never spin it. Because the overall value of the crate or the overall value of the event is actually less than you could just buy from the shop. I could get better value if I just went to the shop right now and bought A coins. It would cost me less than. Uh, it, by, buying the acorns to then buy these credits and these blueprints. It would cost me less to do that than it would to spin this event. So, yeah, that is my that is my take on resource crates. But then let's say there's like this one. Right? The drops are flat. If it's a flat rate, then I typically say it is worth a shot if you want to. 
However, you do have to make sure you realize what you're spending. You should always assume that it's going to take you. Well, let, let's say let's say you have this right here, right? This is uh, 16 total rewards, each one costing 800, which is 8,000 plus 6 times 800, which is like 4,800. So that's almost 13,000 acorns? Yeah. Almost 13,000 acorns. Just to get nade launcher 12. And really, really you, could, you can say, well, hey, there's, there's blueprints in here. This won't get you anywhere, by the way. This will maybe get you to rank 5, but I don't even think it's enough to do that. Uh, these implant parts, basically worthless. That's 10,000 implant parts. It's garbage. Uh, this is less than 100,000 credits. That won't even get you to rank 5. Five, uh, six fortune keys, sorry. It's barely worth anything. It's basically just more credits. Absolutely not worthwhile. Uh, you cut that in half, and that's about what you can expect to spend in order to get it, right? Because if the rates are flat, then on average, you will get it after half of the... You will get the main item after half the spins, right? That's just the way that math works. So, seven, or in, in this case... Eight. Yeah. So eight spins. That's still more than 6,000 acorns. And that's absolutely not worth it because you can buy this thing. And again, these are marginal. These are marginal rewards. You could buy this thing for half of that. You could just buy it from the shop, the gear hub. You can buy it for half of that. So it's absolutely never worth doing that. Sometimes I would say if you have a bunch of acorns, you're not really using it. Then it's like, you know what, sure. Spin it one time, see if you get lucky, but hold yourself to that. You have to hold yourself to that. If um if you spin it once and you don't get lucky, then just leave it. But if you keep the more you go, you get you get um trapped into the, the sunk cost fallacy, right? So what happens is you think, oh well, I already spent 800 acorns and then like three you know five spins later you're you're down 4,000 acorns and you're thinking i've already spent 4,000 acorns i can't stop now like i can't just i can't i can't let that go so the <laughs> but you have to basically it doesn't matter how many times you spun just stop if you did it once maybe twice stop after that this is the same price i believe and it's the same everything it's literally just the same thing except the 16 rather than the 12. But yeah, that's assuming it is flat rates, right? If you get something where the rates are skewed, I can't really show it, but there is, technically there's this. If there's an event where the rates are skewed like this, and they're not even, don't even do it. Save your tokens, get the compensation, because the compensation will be better than what you will get if you spawn it. Almost guaranteed. And it's definitely not worth buying tokens. Because they've hiked the prices way up. They have absolutely... Um, you can buy the tokens if it's flat rates, once again. But if it's, if it's skewed rates, don't even participate. Absolutely not. I don't know what Blue Falcon's saying or why, but I'll just... Leave it at that. What's your opinion on the Viper weapons? Something to consider investing in, or is minigun graviton beam still better sustained fire weapon options? I think minigun will be better. Because there is basically no match for its close range, just absolute brutality. And it's mostly because of that, right? It is usable at other ranges, but Graviton Beam actually has higher average DPS. It, it has the highest DPS in the game. The highest sustained DPS, I should say. Um, we're talking about like burst DPS, then I think it's still Rocket Mortar has the highest. But um, yeah, Graviton Beam has the, has the highest average DPS in the game. But it's garbage against players. 
It's really bad. Uh, what makes Minigun so good is that it is much, much better up close, and you can absolutely shred things with, like, just insane firepower. And then you can, you know, you can use that to take down, like, Aegis Domes and stuff, because the spread doesn't really matter. But yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to start with Dragon Territory. That is a good looking question. It was 7490. I could have like copy pasted. Is this here? 58807. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> he does have a slingshot. Should I get a kill shot to replace the slingshot? Or Redeemer, he says. It says backtrack, but it's, he means Redeemer. And then, and get Missile Rack 8, then Sentinel, or replace Stalker with that first. This is a good build. You'll be fine. I think, if I'm being honest, at very least, this is a beacon runner. I don't think this will get you any kills, and I don't believe that it will be useful for much else either. So in all honesty, replace replace the Zephyr with Killshot first. And then put the Sentinel here. Um, <clears throat> but you re probably replace the Zephyr with kill shot, and if if you think a Zephyr would be better, uh, you're I'm not super familiar with how how good Zephyr is at that stage of the game, so you you can feel free to to use Zephyr instead of slingshot. So like I'm not I'm not saying that what I think is raw or anything. Go ahead and do what you want to do, um, but definitely give kill shot the the better weapons. Whatever weapons you have, if it's like fragment gun eights, put it on kill shot. Leave slingshot with the leftovers a hundred percent. Or, or if or if you're using Zephyr, leave Zephyr with the leftovers. Pretty much like what you have here. This is fine. Use a Thermal Lance too. I don't know why you're not using a Thermal Lance too. It literally is a beam weapon. And it will increase the damage from your Graviton Beam. So, there you go. Otherwise, looking solid. Disc Launcher, early game. Very, very effective. <clears throat> Should I rank up Surge or Aegis? Both are rank 4 right now. AK-47. You don't have Aegis in your hangar at the moment. Both of your hangers look pretty similar, except you have an Eclipse in one and a Scorpius in the other, so I'm going to assume this is your main one, because Eclipse is significantly better. Uh, this is decent. This is good. This is... That's pretty good, honestly. Honestly, all of these are pretty solid. Uh, are you thinking of replacing... Oh, you got the Guardian instead of the Nomad, actually. It's very interesting. This is probably like your CPC hanger. I'm not sure that you'd really need an Aegis in here if you have a Bastion. Aegis lost a lot of value with um, the introduction of Seeker and a few other things like Stormrack. Which makes it less of like an absolute must-have, which is great, because it used to just be like the only mech to use. It's still very good and probably better than Bastion, but I'm not sure that you would absolutely need to. I would say ranking up Surge would be the better option, especially since you already have this. What I would recommend doing, for the most part, is working on each of your mechs one by one, getting them to rank 6. And then leaving them there. You have Ember 8s, which, like, your Nomad can't really use if you rank it up. 
but it could probably use the extra HP because it is somewhat of a tank. Um, this you're definitely going to want to rank up so that you can get double graviton tens. This is pretty much fine as it is because you're going to have to rank up your EM16. So yeah, I, I would go with this. I would go with the Surge first and then the Eclipse. And then maybe the Nomad afterward. It just is great, but fast, like le the legendary scouts are, they're really just better, honestly. Pretty much everybody has all three of those in their hangar. Every, every like top competitive player, I should say. They're just that good. Preston, welcome. Should I buy Graviton 12 with A-Coins or spend them on better mechs to replace MD? Oh, probably spend it on better mechs. Hmm, Graviton 10s are probably good enough, honestly. You got three maxed mechs. But then, like, you have several other ones that are really suffering. Honestly, I'd say Missile Rack 12 and try to get double 12s for your kill shot because that's not going to work. The Graviton kill shot's not going to work very well. Missile Rack's much better. Graviton Orion is not the worst. It's not super ideal because, like, the implosion doesn't stack with the back damage portion of Orion. All weapon attacks against Mark's, Mark's max count is back hits and also deal bonus damage. So that bonus, that back damage, bonus damage that, from the Hunter's Mark. Implosion doesn't get it because it's an effect, not actual damage. So it's less ideal, but it's still, you still get the 50%. Basically like using it on a stalker, it's still decent. Especially since Arc Torrent got nerfed. <laughs> yeah, before I would have been like, yeah, you know, Arc Torrent's pretty good. But uh, after the great update, it became significantly less good. And now that they got nerfed, it's even less. So you could get this to rank six. You could put the Graviton 10s on it, that's fine. The 12s, I wouldn't worry about, for at least for now. Get Missile Rack 12s. That would be much better. That's fine. That's fine, honestly. Yeah, just leave that the way it is. You could even... Yeah. And the MD. Honestly, like, you could leave that as well. If you really wanted to. I don't think the MD is holding you back as much as, like, the fact that you have two pretty weak builds specifically this orion like this rack eights aren't even with a mark it's like it's not going to do that much and this is just not an optimized build even though like you're not quite you're not quite late game yet but I'm, i imagine that you're not getting a ton of usage of this build it's more or less a, a beacon runner suicide mech i would have to assume Smalls TTG, welcome. I started just under two weeks ago. Lost with what weapons and mechs to use. Could you one tell me if they look good? If not, what to change to the next things I should work on? Bet. You think it's really important to help out uh, early game players while they're still new? Because even myself, <laughs> as as a as a new player. I invested heavily into redox and stasis beams, which are terrible items, by the way. But they were they were pretty fun. I don't really regret it. I probably would have done it anyway, just to be honest. Um, <laughs> minigun, more minigun, cryo launcher and javelin rack. Okay, paragon. That's not going to do you any good. Um. Okay. Don't rank these up. I'm going to start by saying don't rank 
any of these up except for the Guardian. The Guardian is the only one that you can use late game, and that's simply because its ability is so destructive. There's really no counter to the ability. And so, it is the only one that you would realistically continue using if you were like two, three times this SP. This absolutely not, but it's only rank two, so that's fine. It's also not a brawler, so get rid of that. Um, sure. yeah, really <clears throat> the the as as you probably noticed from this, um, I know a lot of people came from War Robots, and so they probably get this confused. When you rank up a mech, you get more energy, which means that it simply will never become profitable, and it will never be worth your time to invest in low energy weapons. It just won't. You buy them, uh, and you can use them for a while, but then you replace them, so you never upgrade them. It's just not, it, it's not really worth it. That said, EM Rifle 8 can be paired with an EM 16, and you and a lot of people do use that, even on like maxed mechs. They can do that to do like a total of 24. And so that's fine. I don't, uh, I don't blame you for getting that. And at your stage of the game, this is great. Actually, you should be using both of them on your Guardian. I don't know why you're not. You start with two. Every, uh, every weapon of eight energy or less comes with two. Every weapon of ten energy or more, you have to get it to rank six. You see this? This is like the stat upgrade chart. When you get it to rank six, you get to use two of them. It's what we call, uh, in the game, it's what, it's what players call duplicating a weapon. That means that they are getting it to rank 6. So, um, like in this case, your minigun 8s, you have two of them. This You you do have two EM rifle 8s, you're just not using them. It would be much benef much more beneficial if you do that. Uh, the Puma, don't invest in it. There is a Panther, which is literally, it literally its existence is is solely to be a better Puma. That is that is the point of its existence, Panther. Um, this looks like it's supposed to be okay. Here, here's what I'm here's what I'm taking away. <clears throat> this is kind of your sniper. This is your brawler tank. This is your like super heavy DPS. This is kind of your uh, backline, right, with the indirect fire weapons. And this is kind of your beacon runner. Replace this with a fast mech as soon as you can. Paragon's not fast. Speed will win you so many games, it's not even funny. There's massive speed meta. So, uh, pretty soon, you will probably have access to Killshot or Redeemer, both of which are worth getting. But I definitely wouldn't recommend you getting anything lower tier. Like, don't get Slingshot, don't rank up Slingshot. Slingshot's just a worse kill shot. Um, don't bother with Shadow. Shadow's fast, but it's not worth upgrading. Uh, and it's not worth purchasing either, because it's a big acorn, uh, it's a big currency sink. Acoins, obviously, are in small supply. So, just wait until you can get kill shot and put that here. Preferably Panther to replace this. This could be replaced with an Aegis very, very nicely. You even have the uh, the energy. Like, this this could immediately just be slapped on an Aegis, and it would work fantastic. Aegis being one of the best mechs in the game, so, you know, that would be the, the one to go for first, I would say. Uh, this... Arachnos is a bad mech, but if you're using weapons like this, it doesn't really matter? I would say probably you do want to get rid of it, obviously. But I wouldn't say it's the top priority to get rid of. I'd say the top priority would be replacing this with something fast. And then secondarily, you could get you get access to Aegis Fat before you get access to Panther. Which is sad, because yeah, at that point you might, it might even be better to replace the the Puma with an Aegis and run two tanks. 
Aegis is just as fast as Puma, and its ability is just much better. So it would essentially be the same thing. It has less energy, though. So while your Puma has 20, the Aegis will start off with 16, because it is a medium mech and not a heavy. That said, I still think it would be better. You could just replace that with like a Pulse Cannon 6 or something. Literally anything. Uh, Fusion Cannon 6, yeah. <laughs> you, you get rid of these. Probably you want like an actual close quarters weapon. Missile Rack is a good one, actually. But only once you've replaced it with um, a better mech, honestly. I would worry about the mech before I'd worry about the weapon. So yeah, it's a lot to go over, but, you know, it's uh, stretch goals, you know what I'm saying? Long term. Hopefully, you were able to uh, follow along. You understand what, what I'm saying and why. And if not, feel free to ask. Should I rank up Eclipse or Orion? I know you said also. And if you... Uh, okay, hold on. That's that's definitely not true. This is not your ID. Smalls TTG. Gifted five mem memberships. Appreciate it, sir. Pogster G-Star Preston. I swear Preston gets it every time. Master of Games. There we go. You are welcome, sir. And thank you very much. Okay, so he has a correct he has a correction for his ID here. Uh at still This is not this is not accurate. This is a this is a new player who literally like he literally he, Played the tutorial and then stopped playing the game. So I'm going to move on. Go to your game. Go to your profile. Press this button right here. This will copy it. It's on mobile as well. And then you won't have any, uh, you won't stand any chance of getting it wrong. But that guy certainly did not have an eclipse or whatever it was that you were talking about. Um. Who is Game On? I think Tech Robot is who I was looking at. 709, yes, that's correct. What things should I rank up? Or what weapons do I need to add to make my hangar better? Okay. You got your indirect fire here. You don't really need this on something fast, but it is useful. What you really don't need this on is something uh, tanky, something that can take hits. In fact, you don't want it on something that can take hits, which Arachnos can't, so that's fine. It's better used on something that's faster, um, like a kill shot. Like a kill, sh like kill shot fits that per uh, description perfectly. That's why a lot of people use it. Uh, Zephyr, this is not a bad build for Zephyr. This is pretty good for Guardian. I can't imagine this is fantastic. Unspecialized pilot. It's very interesting. It's very specific to Onyx. I don't think this build will work out super well long term. Um. Yeah, that's really all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> EM rifle Orion. If you have a low energy Orion, then that's great. You can one shot pretty much everything, but long term, if you have like 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 let's take my Max Orion for example, it, I would not want to put EM rifle twelves on it because that's absolute overkill. If I marked someone and shot them with a single with a single EM rifle, then it's going EM rifle twelve, then it's going to kill them, and I'm going to waste a lot of damage. So it's better off doing something like railgun, where it still has a lot of burst damage, but you get multiple shots. So if it transfers, I can go on to kill, like, three more people with a single shot. I'd have to use, you know, I'd have to use both of the shots from each railgun each time, but it's still, it's fine. 
uh, I can I can one shot a brick house, a maxed out full HP uh, with the legend max legendary pilot and everything. I can I can one shot a brick house with real guns on Orion. And uh, yeah, EM rifle would just be wasted damage. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. But that is it is good for now. Is all I'm trying to say. I you're missing speed, honestly. There's zero speed here. You have Orion, and you have Zephyr. So you should have access to kill shot, and that's absolutely what you should get next. If you really want to, you could use Redeemer, but kill shot is a better beacon runner, and I think that's what you need right now. Uh, if you want to give it the missile racks, I would not. I, I would say that's actually a decent idea. You give give kill shot the missile racks, and you could give Zephyr the helix rack, which might sound weird. But here's the thing: helix rack has an effective range up until twenty, and I think the range implant even. Well, you don't have it, but I think possibly the range implant reduces that, but I don't remember. At any rate, Zephyr has a range of 30, which means that you could stun them at 30, and you'd still be able to lock on and kill them from there with Helix Rex, so it's not that bad. And Zephyr is just like, a, it's a very weak and very niche mech anyway. So you probably don't use it in a whole lot of situations. So yeah, that is basically what I would do for now. This is decent, but... Um, yeah. It, it it works for now. Like I said, it works for now, so I'm not really going to say anything about it. AK-47. Oh my god. You should specify. Look, if you have, if if your if your hanger is like tanked to crap, and you send me your ID, then that is your fault. That's not my fault. It's not my job to to read between the lines. I think I think it is fair to say that that is not on me. Seiko. Okay. What does he say? Is my surge good enough? I feel like disc launcher surge underperforming. It, it probably does. Will arc surge or helix Orion be better? Any other advice would be wonderful. Got you. Let me see what you got here. You do have... Wait, what's the difference between these? You have an Orion. Okay. And that is the only difference. So yeah, this launcher surge is not going to be great. Missile rack surge, though, would be pretty solid. You clearly have the 12 and 8 necessary, uh, so that would be the way that I would go. In fact, I see a lot of people, particularly... I wouldn't even say like particularly in 2v2, but uh, people in 2v2. I know some people who are really, really good. And they use Missile Rack on Surge. They don't even have Storm Rack. They have Storm Rack on other stuff. Missile Rack is really good. Surge, the Surge EMP, is fantastic. And so long as the damage from Missile Racks is adequate, if you're hitting people in the back, then you don't really need anything that's more powerful. AK-47. I did not say that yours was tank. I was giving another example of what I would say is not my fault. Yours was yours was just uh, the wrong hanger. If I see multiple hangers, then I have to kind of look at what they have and figure out which one I assume is their main one. So if you want me to specifically look at one over the other, I would appreciate if you let me know. Because obviously, you know, how would I know? Unless it was super obvious, I don't think there's any way for me to know. Uh, okay, so yeah, Missile Rack Surge, much, much better. This is pretty good. I would say this is pretty good. I, this is pretty good. The... Where do we have this at? Okay. I absolutely love Railgun Orion. Okay. 
It's it's like my favorite sniper mech. Favorite sniper build, I should say. It's really, really fun. Well, with that said, Railgun's definitely the best choice for Guardian. I would say that you should replace Guardian with Orion, if you decide to field the Orion, and then put Railgun on it. Obviously, you can't put double Railgun 12s on it until it's maxed, but that's fine. You can always wait. Uh, you have a lot of mechs that are really close to max. And the thing is, when you max out something, you get a significant boost to firepower because of the added energy. Uh, Smalls TTG is because worth getting for $60? Absolutely not. Once you get to tier 7 in the gear hub, it's actually the only mech that is available for credits, and thus one of the cheapest purchases that you're ever going to make uh, in terms of like late game stuff. Obviously, uh, you're probably not in tier 7 in your hub right now. You're probably in like tier, I think, 4 based on what I saw. So possibly tier 5. So um, the issue then becomes, you know, do I, do I get it early? Brickhouse is definitely better if you get it early, but I don't think it's really necessary. It's more of a fun thing. It's more of a fun mech anyway. I consider Brickhouse to be pretty fun. Uh, but it's not as um, it's not as tanky as as the description makes it sound. Uh, there are other mechs that are far far tankier, and the damage scaling, of course, makes it really difficult to survive. And it's very slow, which just makes it you know the ability is DPS. It just it's just a really it's a it's a slightly heftier like Orion, right? Where it sacrifices some speed and some firepower for a bit more HP, which does make it better in some cases. But it's not one of those. It's not one of those like crazy effective things. Worth sixty bucks, I would not say so. Anyway, in terms of, I, I mean, if you have disc launcher sixteen, that might actually not be terrible on Onyx. But I, what I'm seeing here actually is three heavy hitter damage dealer build, like damage dealer builds, and then you have another one that's like close range DPS. I don't think you really need all three of them. Onyx is great with missile rack. It's 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 so fun. I love it. But it's definitely the less useful of the three. So I would say probably replace it with an Aegis or a Bastion if you have it. But preferably Aegis because it's cheaper and it's slightly more effective. Um because you're also missing HP. The only kind of defense that you have is by way of EMP, System Crash, Shield Barrier, and technically the resistance on Nomad. But you don't have anything that is just inherently tanky. And I don't think that's going to do you a ton of favors either. As to what you could put on those, Graviton Beam is a solid option. I mean, you can get the Graviton 10 for credits, and then duplicate it because it starts at rank 5. So you, then you could duplicate it probably eh, with like pretty minimal cost. It's like 2,500 A coins or something for the rank up. And so at that point, actually, I think for a 10 energy weapon, I think it's actually under 2,000 A coins. I think it's like 1875, something like that for, for a 10 energy rank up. But anyway, it'll cost you pretty pretty minimal amount but uh, is, is also very effective, and you can use it on 20 energy, because obviously getting something from rank 6 to max is, is no small matter, as, a, as I'm sure you're aware. But yeah, the Orion's nice, as for like the main thing you were asking, the Orion's nice, but I, if, if you're going to field it, I would say field it instead of Guardian. Happy almost Easter. Welcome, Skin. Happy almost Easter to you, too. Macarena account. Oh, no. Someone's already getting timed out. Okay. Let's try you again. I play video games. 
Ah, here we go. Should I rank up my Eclipse or my Orion? But just in general, please some advice for my future hanger. Sorry for mistaken ID. No, honest mistake. You're lucky that it wasn't the wrong guy. Because if it was the wrong guy... By that, by that I mean, you're lucky that the guy stopped playing. Because if it was somebody who, like, had... Let's say they had an Orion or Eclipse, or maybe they didn't. But, like, they had a hanger going on, they were still playing the game. I would have fully assumed that was you, and I... Mm, legitimately, I probably would not have seen any messages saying that uh, saying anything to the contrary. <laughs> so you probably you probably would have just gotten like fully skipped at that point. Anyway, should I rank up my Eclipse or my Orion? Let's see. You have a cheater right now, which is not an Orion, but definitely would be better if it was. Uh, <laughs> this is this is a decent sign. I won't lie, this is a decent sniper. Panther's obviously better, but I don't hate it. You have Storm Rack 8s and Disclauncher 8s. You should absolutely 100% be using the Storm Racks on Nomad because it's so much, so much better. Cheetah, let's assume for a moment this was Orion. I, I don't even care. If it could be Orion, this could be literally anything but Surge. Surge is the only thing where I would say, okay, yeah, go ahead. Put the storm rack on that, but for now, arc torrent's good enough on surge. It would definitely be better to put arc torrent on surge and storm rack on Orion, or not Orion Nomad, than to do it the other way around because arc torrent Nomad's not very good. At least the EMP from surge gives you some time <clears throat> to deal some damage with those, which is why that's not terrible. <coughs> Excuse me. In terms of this. Actually, Disc Launcher 8's on Bastion, and the Helix on Cheetah, or Orion, doesn't matter, would actually be pretty solid. You don't need an indirect fire tank. In fact, it is, an ac it is actively bad to do this. And I'll explain why. If you have something, and this goes for like Panther too, by the way. You have something like a Panther, something like a, an Aegis, a Bastion, doesn't matter. And it has mortars or helix rack or javelin rack or something like that, something to that effect, where your goal is to stay back. But then, if someone gets up close, right, the way you, the way you're probably thinking is, well, you know, if someone gets up close, then I have my ability, I can keep myself safe. But the very fact that they're getting close means that your indirect fire is not enough to actively keep them from pushing you. You cannot out DPS anything. If you're using Helix Rack. Basically anything. So. Because of that. It really just means. That you'll keep this build alive. For much longer than you should. And it will cause you to lose. And I. I do this so many times. If I see somebody. In like a Helix Rack build. I will. On the enemy team. I mean. <laughs> I will purposely leave them alive, especially if it's mortars, I will purposely leave them alive for as long as possible because I know that they can't keep up with me. They, they absolutely cannot out DPS anything that I have, period. And so I can kill all of their bots much faster than they can kill my bots. The only time when something like this is useful is if you actively control the center beacon. Let's assume it's control points, right? Or, or in this case, if it's, if it's 5v5, let's say it's 5v5. If you have the kill lead, then you can spawn something like this, and then you can do damage and keep people from pushing. You can really, really discourage them from pushing and make it incredibly hard for them to get that advantage back. That's what the value of this is. But if you put it on a Bastion, it's not going to do very well. So put, put the Helix on Orion or Cheetah, whichever one you decide to use. Baymaster, welcome. Oh, you got the chain gun silk. I'm going to look at yours because I think it'd be funny to see chain gun six on Aries. Rupumoni, if that's how you pronounce your name. 
I am very sorry if it's not. Oh, okay, you don't have it, but you, I think you're, you're thinking of getting it, I'm assuming. Anyway, at this stage of the game, actually, yes, Chain Gun on Ares would be fantastic for you. It, it, it would absolutely shred. It would be hilarious. In terms of the 8 energy, 12 energy, oh, Cryo 6 is This is 8. This is 12. You know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. It is a ton of credits. So this is true. This is true. But if the man's going to get it, then it would be best used on Ares. Would I recommend that you get it? It's up to you, I guess. But it's also, I mean, it's also a lot of stars. I think... Well, let's see. The, um, Chain Gun 6 should be in, like, tier 4. Gear Hub Weapons. Chain Gun 6, tier 4. I was correct. And in tier 4, most things are going to cost quite a few A-coins. You will get Arachnus for free. Stalker and Tengu both cost A-coins, though. You can get a few of these things, but a lot of them cost A-coins. There's a lot of legendary ones that you can't even buy. Uh, like, there's a lot of epic ones, like freaking uh, Ember Gun, Quantum Gun. Um, what's another one? Cryo Launcher. <laughs> you can't even buy those. They're all for money right now. So... In honesty, getting five stars for a bunch of credits is not the worst thing you could do because probably alt you, you your only other option would be to use a coins on something else that you know would also not be something you use late game. I, I, so honestly, I don't think it's a terrible idea. If you have the credits for it, I say go for it. It's a lot of stars to get for progression as well. the hell is this? Oh my god. Um. Don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. Uh. I have. Hey, bro. Okay. Bum fuzzled. I have Ember Gun 12, 4 star, and Mini Gun 12, 5 star. Very nice. Hey, automatically got rid of the things. That's. Which one should I upgrade according to my hangar? Fair enough. This is very good. Okay. Let me see. Let me see what you have. You have an Aegis in one and a Redeemer in the other. Correct, yes. And this is a maxed Aegis and a maxed Redeemer. This is not a good build, I can tell you right now. Sniper Aegis, not worth it. You can protect yourself from all sides for like 10 seconds. Or at least, you know, <clears throat> from a lot of a lot of firepower for 10 seconds. So what you should be doing, in my opinion, is getting the absolute most firepower from that as possible. So the minigun 12 on this would be fantastic. However... Double disc launcher builds, absolutely not a great idea. What else is good? I just want to verify what your other hangar has. So you have two railgun, two disc launcher. Okay. I'd say railgun on guardian, ember gun on nomad, disc launcher on aegis. Would not be terrible. At very least, I do think. That Disc Launcher probably has higher DPS, average DPS, than EM Rifle. I'm, I'm fairly certain. If it doesn't, then go ahead and keep on using that. But uh, I, would, I would assume Disc Launcher has higher average DPS than EM Rifle. So, yeah, I, I, would, I would do that. One Disc Launcher build is not terrible. 
but using it on a brawler mech is not a good idea. You should definitely get Ember Gun. Ember Gun's the better weapon for Nomad because it's the only one that can basically hard counter a Guardian. Minigun is really effective on Nomad, and I absolutely love it, but if you run into a Guardian, you're screwed. And Nomad is kind of the only thing that could potentially deal with Guardian. <coughs> Excuse me. Damn. So that's probably a good idea. This absolutely don't change. You could do Disclauncher on Panther if you decided you preferred that. It's not bad. It's probably better than Disclauncher Aegis. Um, but yeah, Minigun 12 on Aegis would also be fantastic. In terms of the Redeemer, you could just replace the Aegis with Redeemer until you get something more suitable to it. Because, like, let's be real. Let's be real. What 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 situations would an Aegis be more beneficial than a Redeemer? It's mostly the situation of, like, you're, so you're trying to hold down the center beacon. At which point, EM rifles <laughs> are going to be ineffective up close, if anyone's up in your face. They're ineffective up close. Uh, they have a very low RPM if you have multiple enemies, or if someone doesn't die in a single hit. So you're screwed pretty much no matter what if you try to use this in any way other than the same way that you just use a redeemer essentially at which point you may as well be using a redeemer because at least it's faster and i say that until you get something with really good dps um like minigun or even even like missile rack uh, missile Rack is not terrible. I understand that it has a longer reload time, but it has much higher uh, burst DPS, especially up close, than um, EM Rifle does. Storm Rack Seekers can also destroy a Guardian. This is true. I don't think he has a Seeker, though. Otherwise, he'd probably be using it. Logan Snow. Let me see. Okay. Should I swap out Panther or one of my attacker mechs and buy Eclipse? Or something else? And what weapons should I change, if any? Buy Eclipse. Okay. Eclipse is very, very good. It is one of the top three mechs for sure. Uh, in fact... Replace your Gatecrasher. Honestly. If you could put EM rifles on Eclipse, there is nothing in the game that hard counters an EM rifle eclipse. Because it's not close enough. It, it's it's not going to be close enough for like a guardian or any type of close range thing. The only thing, it, it can't get EMP'd, obviously. It can't, um, it can't get locked on by mortars or helix or anything like that. The only thing that t potentially counters it is a nomad. And that's only if you're within dashing distance, which most of the time you're not. So I would say EM Rifle Eclipse is probably much better than Gatecrasher. Gatecrasher is fun, and you could use it instead of Onyx simply because Gatecrasher is slightly faster. And the speed is useful. Not for survivability, the speed is useful for getting angles. It helps you get angles with something like Helix Rack much better than something that's slow. Because your quad rocket probably I'm I'm gonna be go on, on a limb and say that probably you're not really getting any kills with the quad rocket. Uh even though it deals good damage. So yeah, I would say that. Uh let me should definitely try to max out some of these pilots. 
because the bonus that you get from maxing out a pilot is crazy. At least get it to look to rank four, because then you get the twenty percent on the sniper uh, specialized weapon damage, right? So rank four is where you get the first big bonus, and then it maxes when you get the second big bonus. So you absolutely should not have any at rank three, which I don't think you do. Yep, that's good. The railgun you could put on Panther. This is a good build. This is good enough for now. Uh, it's not the it's not super ideal. Arc torrent lost a lot of value, but it's fine. You could do missile rack. Like I told the last guy, you could do missile rack twelve and eight. If you have it, if you don't have it, you could buy it. I'm pretty sure both of them are available for eight coins. It's not too bad. Um, and it is much, much, much better than Arc Torrent. But ultimately, yes, I would say your hangar is pretty slow. This is the only fast thing you have. Replacing this with an Eclipse would do you a lot of good. Uh, wait. Let me see. Hold on. I'm trying to copy. The Noir Angel says, I already got my hanger that I once mentioned in your live broadcast. I would really appreciate your opinion. I'm not sure exactly what you mean. I assume you mean some type of uh, maybe this was like the last month, last time we did this kind of stream. This is interesting. Your hangar is very slow. I love the fact that it's all tanks. But part of me feels like maybe your hangar is not what you were meaning to send. I feel like your main hangar is not this. If it is, then this is pretty funny, honestly. Um, if it is, let me see. EM Rifle Ares is better than Railgun Ares. Railgun Bastion is probably... No, wait. EM rifle on Ares. Disc launcher on Sentinel. Disc launcher, you kind of keep your distance. And in Sentinel's case, you do kind of keep your distance. The reason it's not good with sniper weapons, though, is because it when it walks, the aiming thing goes like way up and way down. You can do it, but it's not recommended. Um, and then, you know, something with like a good reasonably sustained DPS um, will also help Sentinel because the more damage you start taking, the faster your shield comes back. And so honestly, I think it would actually be pretty, pretty solid with Disc Launcher. Uh, okay, and so now the Aegis has nothing. The Aegis... So it's, it's between... Railgun Aegis or Missile Rack Aegis, and I'm not really sure which one's better. Probably the, probably these are kind of interchangeable. Missile Rack and Railgun. You could probably put on either one, whichever one you think does better. I encourage everyone to like do their own work. Obviously, like uh, if you can, which you definitely can. Doesn't matter if you have a mech specific implant on there. Doesn't matter if. You know, two of your implants aren't doing anything. Still, swap the weapon. See if it works better. Because most of the time, you'll notice if... A, like, one or two implants won't make a big difference. You'll notice if it does better on one thing or another. So that's what I would say. If you're going for full tanks, then yeah. But it looks like you have a Nomad, so I would say go for something faster.
Oliver Morning. I stopped paying for mechs now. Nice. And I also play on mobile. All right. So it looks like you bought a rank four surge. Honestly, it's a good purchase. Absolutely do not blame you for that. You may have bought a railgun as well. So again, good purchase. You bought the minigun eights. Not not too bad. Not too bad. This is a good build. I would stick with that. This is a good build. I would stick with that. Put the missile rack on surge, for sure. Put the disclauncher on Redeemer. Redeemer can kind of keep its distance, and then if you get into any kind of really crazy situation, you can always backtrack. So it's not a big deal. It's really not hard to keep yourself in a situation where you can curve these things around corners. Um, but Surge's ability requires that you get close to people, at which point you may as well have something that does a lot of damage in a short amount of time, which is Misrag. This Panther is not doing a lot, I would say. The Helix Rack on the Panther, it's what I was telling the last guy with the Helix Rack on the Bastion. I even used Panther as another example of why it is a bad idea to have a survivable mech with indirect fire weapons like this. Because more often than not, especially if you're starting with it, you're going to lose a lot of ground. Um, you can make it work, obviously. If you're willing to scrap your mechs when you start to, when you know, if you're watching the battle, uh, looking at beacons, figuring out who's ahead and who's not. If you're willing to scrap your mech, then it's perfectly fine. No, no problems with it. But most people are not willing to scrap their mechs. For now, I would say swap these two. These are not bad mechs that you have. These are actually really good mechs that you have. If you could replace the Redeemer with an Eclipse, but I'm pretty sure that's still money only and you're not buying anything, so that's kind of like... <laughs> I, I, think you, I think you got good stuff. You got, you got decent speed with these two. You want at least two faster mechs. You got good firepower with these two. You typically want two heavy DPS builds. And you have an indirect here. Which is kind of the extra. So I don't I don't see that as bad at all. I think that is very solid. Actually, what time are we on? Okay. So we still got like 45 minutes. I started like 15 minutes late. So I might go for 15 more minutes. Lucas, stop. <laughs> I will time you out if you keep spamming that. And no, I don't want to see a good hanger. I can I can look at my own hanger if I want to see a good hanger. Plenty of people with plenty of good hangers. I want to see your hanger specifically. And I want to know what about it makes you think that you need a hangar review specifically, right? Why are you here? If you're just here to, you know, hopefully get your hangar up on screen just for everybody to see it, then I'm sorry, but there's there's just too many people that have legitimate questions and I can't really do that. And I would rather not, uh, I would rather not try. So, we got some very interesting things here. That's a three-star Redux, wow. This is very interesting indeed, actually. Who was it? The, was this? 7733. I... Lost the... Oh, here it is. Baymaster. Okay. I was going to say, I lost the message. What should I use on my rank 4 Orion to complete my Orion's last achievement to get 45? 450 controller awards. Um, not this. Not this. This is what you use when you have a beacon. This is not what you use to grab a beacon. 
So, once again, I'd have to say Railgun. But I don't think you have it. If you have a single Railgun 16, that's fantastic. You could do EM Rifle, but before you, before you, fall, into the, before you fall into that thinking, here's the thing. What you really need is something with really high damage. Preferably something that deals it really quickly, because Orion is squishy. Its only defense is that it has massive amounts of DPS, right? So, it is preferable to get lots of damage out in a short amount of time. That said, it also needs to have multiple shots. It needs to be able to fire and kill at least two people, because you will theoretically have to kill someone who's on a beacon, and then quite possibly have to deal with someone who's respawning on said beacon before you get to it, right? This is very, very common. You kill a bot that's on a beacon, and then but right before you get to it, there's another bot that respawns on the beacon. You need to be able to kill both of them. You can't do that with EM rifle. Not, be, not only because it's not a close-range weapon, and this would require you for controller awards, our beacon awards, by the way. That's uh, for capturing beacons. I'm pretty sure. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, that would require you to get close to enemy spawn points, and thus getting close to enemies. So you don't want something that is bad up close. And you definitely don't want something that has a single shot in the chamber before you then have to five seconds before <laughs> your next shot. Uh, because if you don't kill the first person and then the next person spawns on top of you, you're, you're just gone. You're gone. You're not going to get it. So this is not good. This is not good. This is not good because you'd have to get close in order to deal any damage, and Orion is not great up close. You don't want to be close if you don't have to be, but obviously... For, for those awards, you have to be. You want to deal your damage from as far away as possible, uh, but also um, in, this, in this isolated scenario, you might think that I'm not making a lot of sense, right? In this isolated scenario, it, were, it would be fine because you're up close, you're on the beacon, people are spawning, you have shotguns, you're fine. The thing is, getting to that beacon with a not particularly fast and very, very weak and very vulnerable Orion, getting to that beacon is going to be the problem. You, you can't kill anything with shotguns from a distance. So if you don't have any kind of range, you can't even get to the beacon in the first place. If you were on the beacon, this would be fine, but getting to it is not really going to work. Misorak is yet another of those situations where it only has the one shot. At very least, it has a lot more DPS up close, so it would be preferable to EM Rifle. But... You can swap your Missile Guardian onto your Rhine. And that's... I mean, of all of the weapons that you have here, that is probably your best option, but it's still not a good option, and I want you to be aware of that. I would, I would highly recommend that you go with a different weapon that has higher, um, that has equal, you know, high DPS, just like Misrak, Misrak, DPS is fine. But what it doesn't have is any type of reload speed or multiple shots to match it. So if you have anything like that, then you would be chilling. Voltaic RPG might work at your point in the game, but even that, I'm not really sure if that's quite what you're looking for. But it would be worth a shot if you have it. I'm trying to think of what else. Eight energy, probably epic weapons, right? Weapons. The eight energy epics are here. Fusion cannon, eight. I think that's eight coins. I don't remember. If it is, then absolutely don't get it. Quantum Gun 8, and doesn't really deal a lot of damage. Nade Launcher. Nade Launcher is what you want. Mm -hmm. Nade Launcher has incredible DPS. Pretty quick reload time. 
and you don't even have to be looking at the person in order to fire it. Well, you don't have to have line of sight, I should say. You do have to be looking at them, obviously. So you can fire it over things, which in some cases would help you kill um, players on beacons before before you can get there. Nade launcher is definitely a good option for you, and I'm pretty sure the eights are for credits. If they're not, then I'm fairly certain there's others, possibly a ten and a six that you could get for credits. So I would consider that to be the better option, better than missile rack, because you're not going to kill multiple things. You can kill the one thing if it's there. You can definitely kill the one thing, because a boosted missile rack is going to be going to be great against one enemy. But then when the next enemy spawns, which will happen a lot, by the way, because you don't have to just capture a beacon. You have to get controller rewards. You have to get multiple beacons, and you have to do it in such a um, in such a precise and efficient way that you don't die every time. Or at least half the time. Even dying half the time is obviously not going to work very well either. Blizzy, working on getting Ember 12 and 8 on Nomad, very nice. Maxing Surge with Rogue at 12s. And yeah, Eclipse with Graviton 10s, nice. Lastly, Aegis with Miniguns, I don't know. I want suggestions for Orion with Disruptor 10s. So you want me to say that Orion is good with Disruptor 10? I don't really understand that. Gone. Okay, so the Aegis would be here. The Railguns would be here. I think he said. He'd have Ember Gun for that. He'd have Eclipse instead of Hemlock with Graviton Beams. Pretty solid. And then there's just a random Orion. Nade launchers are not bad. I'm not sure if it's the best option for Orion, but it is there. Eclipse, wait a second, what's your You would have a tank. You would have three scouts. You would have somewhat range. At that point, you'd probably be better off with, like, an EM rifle heavy mech like Gig Crasher or even Onyx or even, well, Panther would obviously be the best one. Because you don't really have range. You have range in the sense that you have a railgun build. And the Graviton Beams themselves can get up to 100 meters, which is not bad. But the problem is you don't really have any type of, like, actual sniper. Because you're not doing, like, you're not doing any real sniping with Surge. You're mostly using it for a close range weapon because railgun is disgustingly effective at close range. So... I would say don't even bother with Orion, to be honest. But if you really want to, it probably wouldn't be bad with Disruptors. I've used Disruptor Orion, and it's not terrible. But it's not the sort of thing that I would run in, like, CBC. It's probably more like a... It's more of like a 5v5 thing. Or even 2v2 is not too bad. Thinking of getting Orion, what weapons should I use? And also, can you review my current hangar? Okay then. No comment on this, honestly. <laughs> That's probably the best option you got. I see this a lot, the Missile Rack 6 with the Nade Launcher 10. Obviously, because Nade Launcher 6 is for A coins. It's just very interesting. You might even be better with like a jab on rack six. But 
probably at your stage of the game, yeah. The damage scaling has not gone so far up that you couldn't use Nade Launcher as a mostly brawler weapon. It is a very effective brawler. Do you want Orion? I mean, replace the Stalker. There's no point in having multiple damage boosting mechs. There really isn't. So, replace the Stalker. As for what weapons, Disc Launcher does work fine. Because the Orion Mark curves around corners somewhat. And the Disc Launcher curves around corners. Orion, like I said before, is not tanky in any way. The only way that it survives is by sheer out DPSing the enemy and killing them before they have the chance to kill you. At which point, it is ideal to use weapons that don't require much, if any, exposure. And Disc Launcher is one of them. So, probably that's your best option. Everything else, honestly, looks fine. I think you're doing about the best that you can with what you have. So yeah, that, honestly, that's pretty much the only thing I'd say. Orion instead of Stalker, just kind of leave it as it is. You have a miss. That's not too good. Richard stuff. What back should I get next to replace Onyx with? Orion or Aegis? Replacing Onyx with Orion or Aegis? Probably Aegis, because Aegis is the better mech. But let me see. You already have a tank. This is sort of tanky. You don't really need any more speed, because you have the fantastic triad of invincible legendary scouts. Probably what you're looking for is DPS. At which point, Orion is good. However, Helix Wreck is not. This is a great build. This is also good. This is also good. This is not a DPS build, though. If you put Orion in place of the Bastion... And by that I mean put the disc launchers on Orion. And then had Bastion with something else. You would probably be slightly better off. Bastion with nade launchers would probably be pretty fire. I've used it a little bit on my own account. But, um, you know, like really late game with like 12,000 squad power. <laughs> Bastions are not as tanky as you think they are because the Damage scaling just goes absolutely crazy. So, nade launchers are not that great. But it would be better than this launcher. Especially considering, I don't know if Sentry's here. Because I never got to tell him. But, um, I tried this launcher on Bastion recently. And I did not like it at all. It is not a good brawler weapon. And it's not effective on, on Bastion, I should say. Uh, would not recommend. So, Orion with a Disc Launcher, Bastion with, definitely not Helix Drag, um, Bastion with probably Nade Launcher, if you can, which I don't really know why you couldn't, there should be something you could do, either double eights or like a ten and a six, or no, the six is eight coins, you get the ten and something six. Um, possibly a Missile Rack 6. Or even a single 16. But I think the single 16 doesn't unlock until way later. But I think the 16 might be for credits. A lot of the epic 16 energy weapons... Why did I go to that? A lot of the epic 16 energy weapons are for credits. Which is weird, but it is what it is. You know, if it's credits, we take it, right? I obviously wouldn't know, because I got mine before they were added for in-game currency.
test the source thing. No. Uh, definitely not right now. Nomad is made of two words, no and mad. I mean, okay. I can confirm Nade Bastion is pretty fire. Nice. Good to know. EM Tengu is a good choice? I don't think so. Can you check for my friend? We play together often, so I am the support role with that Helix Panther. Is he here? Because I don't want to say that... Uh, I, I, I don't want to make it sound like I don't trust you. But here's the thing, more than likely, you will very much dumb it down. If I tell you something, and I tell you why, then you're probably just, if you, t if you told him, assuming, assuming he's not here, if you told him, he'd just, you'd probably just be like, you know, replace this with this. But you wouldn't tell him why. The main reason that I do these streams is to tell people why, so that they don't have to keep coming back. Because that is ultimately my goal, is to teach people what to look for, and how to look at things in a way that they won't need my help every time in order to make a good hanger. Because I don't think it's I don't think it's a good practice to to make it like uh, it'd be good for me because then people would keep coming back. But still, I think I think it's kind of uh, I think it's kind of backward to try to make it so that like people keep coming back for something when I could just tell people how to do it. Not here, but she does watch the channel. Uh, well, okay. I would recommend, like, clipping it or something. If at least you're going to talk in person, then sure, why not? Because most of the time, interactions like that are through the, uh, the in-game chat, right? And so that's just like, they, they have like a character count and everything, so it just doesn't work out very well. This is interesting. This is very good. This is the... I don't really see a point to a disc launcher zephyr. If you replaced these, they would probably do a bit better. The redeemer would not need to get in the line of fire. You can kind of keep it outside the line of fire. And the Zephyr would actually be able to kill things when when something... I, I doubt you're killing anything with this build, is what I'm getting at. Uh, it's very unlikely. This is not terrible. If you're both playing together, honestly, I'd say having two, like, one Helix build each is not ideal. If one person has it, then the other person doesn't need it. If there's like a full team, let's let's say you got like a full team, right? So you got all five players. The most that you want with like helix or mortar is like two. So I would say between the two of you, you probably don't need two helix builds. And if you want to keep your helix. Then she should probably remove hers. What are you missing? Speed. Now you got decent speed here. Um, you're missing good DPS and range, which means railgun or EM rifle. Obviously, those are really difficult weapons to get, but if for whatever reason you happen to get them, or if you have the option to get them, it's probably a good decision. If you don't, then like Graviton Beam is a fairly long range, high DPS weapon. You can get uh, the Graviton 10. You could even duplicate it. You got 20 energy, so you could do that. Uh, and that would not be bad. See, I'd say, I'd say, ditch the helix. And swamp the missile rack and disc launcher. 
on the Redeemer and Zephyr, by the way. Deal Zephyr early game is actually performed pretty good, and it can win matches at times. <laughs> Fair enough. In silence. Go through loadout one or three times. Which we should replace with secret to fight DKG next week. For the sake of argument, I'm going to look because I'm kind of curious what you're going to use. <laughs> Hello. That's hilarious. What's up, bro? I think Ember Nomad and Railgun Surge would be better, right? Cause like every time I see it, every time I see this, like some of the most problematic people are the Railgun Surges. And it's very interesting. Railgun Nomad's obviously really good, but I think Railgun Surge is better. I like this. And this. This are these are speaking my language with this build right here. Yeah, I don't know. I think after the disc launcher nerf, Railgun Surge is kinda of better than Railgun no matter what in my opinion, but I might be wrong about that. Oh yeah, you're gonna enter this time, nice. Maybe I'll uh, maybe maybe we'll get like a ten thousand like for what a fourth time in a row. I swear, I think the last three streams I did was the ten thousand. And by the way, there's a one in eleven chance that someone gets ten thousand, just to keep the average cost down because this is out of pocket. By the way. Don't get too greedy, people. Die. I have one guy apparently who's like complaining. He was like, You should do four or five of these. Oh, like, yeah, you freaking wish. You give me the, uh. It's like 70 bucks for each one. So you give me like the three, four hundred dollars for each one. For each stream. And we got ourselves a deal, pal. Currently working on Panther with Railgun 16s. Eventually, wait, this is the right reason. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I had to check. And eventually, Bastion with Railgun 12s. Should I go for Minigun 12s on Bastion and Railgun 12s on Onyx? In the meantime, I'm doing either Helix Rex 16 or EM 16 on Orion, which. Okay. Very interesting. I would say Minigun or even Graviton ba Bastion is better than Railgun Bastion because, like, Railgun, Railgun's just out of, sh it's out of shots really quickly. And if you're not using it on a fast mech, then you get yourself into trouble and you can't get yourself out. So you're just dead. At very least, Graviton Beam and Minigun have just, like, insane sustained DPS. So, um, especially when the shield goes down. And it EMPs everyone. You stand a much higher chance of killing everyone. As far as Railgun 12 builds go, it's much better to put that on Surge, or even Orion if you really want to. Uh, you've got a good speed here. You've got a tank. This is fairly um, tanky just with the ability. And then you got some DPS here, so that's, that's not too bad. I would consider this a pretty solid mech lineup. In terms of the weapons, get rid of the fragment guns. Mm. Well, hold on. Okay, so you'd have double railgun, Panther. 
I don't think you really, I mean, do you really need two railgun builds? And a, well, you have two railgun pilots. I will give you that. You have two railgun pilots, so I mean, I guess you may as well. So, two railgun builds. I don't think you would want an EM rifle build at that point. I guess unless you put railgun on surge. Keep this, obviously. This is probably better with minigun, but graviton's also fine. You put railgun on surge. You put... I guess railgun on Panther, and then EM rifle on, not on Orion, you don't want EM rifle on Orion, because the damage used from Orion is, like, it's basically a one-shot. I can make my double twelves do a one-shot, so why would I wait four seconds after each shot with an EM rifle? It's just so much wasted damage. So, you wouldn't use the Orion if you have an EM rifle. I would say to replace that with like something else. I think you said Onyx, which is decent, but I wouldn't consider it to be the DPS mech that you probably want. Maybe like a Missile Rack Onyx, though. I think some form of Radius weapon would do you a lot of good. Missile Rack obviously being a lot more accessible than Storm Rack. And Disruptor, I should say. Though nade launcher is also a good choice. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you need three sniper builds, honestly. Sanjay, welcome. Hello, sir. I think nades would do well, but I'm not sure that nades would do well on Onyx, and I'm not sure that they'd be particularly great on Ryan either. Nades do well on a lot of things, but I don't think they'd particularly do well on those two things. Give me some advice for now time. Because I'm an old player and current meta is like... So please review my ID. I... Okay, so basically... You didn't say anything. It was just a lot of words with no actual message. But here we are. You didn't ask me any questions. So we'll try to go through this pretty quickly. We don't really have much of a direction. Uh, Arc Torrent Aegis isn't going to work very well. The thing is, is... It just is fantastic, by the way. But the thing is, you're stuck inside your dome. So if anyone just backs up a little bit, or if they start to back off, you can't really chase them, because then you'd be outside of your dome to take damage. And your weapon just doesn't have the range to kill them at that point. So Disc Launcher, in that case, would probably be better on Aegis. It's got some decent DPS, as does Missile Rack, but clearly you have that on Guardian, which is not a bad idea, by the way. You could use the Arc Torrent on Kill Shot, which is not my favorite, but it's also not any worse than Disc Launcher Kill Shot, I wouldn't say. Nade Launcher Kill Shot would be great. It's got much higher much higher brawling capacity than Disc Launcher does, which you need with the Kill Shot, obviously. Um, people are telling me that Disc Launcher Zephyr is decent, so you could put it on that if you really wanted to, but I would recommend Aegis instead. I'm trying to think, what do you have access to? Not too many things. You got like Fusion Cannon and Nade Launcher, none, neither of which are particularly great, and most of which cost eight coins. But if you could get a Fusion Cannon, that'd probably be better on Aegis. And then you could put the Disc Launcher on Zephyr, the Nade Launcher on Killshot. And then just leave this the way it is, because it's like, it's a, it's a cheetah, <laughs> you know, whatever. It'd be good for you to get more speed, like more faster mechs. Because all of these, these three mechs are slow. 
this one's kind of slow, and this is the only fast one that you have. It's good to have two fast mechs at least. So probably replace the cheetah with something fast if you can. Platinum L. Welcome. I saw people screaming Platinum LTA. Which, uh, <laughs> Hello, sir. Justice for Sentry. Look, he didn't put his ID in. At least I didn't see it. If he did, I did not see it. You're gonna lurk, alright, Sanji. Take care. Okay, I've seen. Hold on. Chance. Yeah, it's scrolling by. Hold on. I've seen this one a few times. Valord, I am at tier 5 currently, debating to get EM8 or tier up. Probably. It's worth tearing up. But let's see. For the sake of argument, I do want to check to see what this is. Is that a tinker hanger? What is that? Why would you... That's weird. Okay. All right then. Um, Helix Redeemer Fragment Gun. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. This is probably pretty good. I'm not sure which of these weapons would be better on Guardian, but if you haven't tried Voltaic RPG on Guardian, definitely do that. I kind of would assume it would be slightly better. I don't know why I would assume that, but I kind of just do. So maybe try it. Getting EM Rifle 8 would be really good, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you get a new Epic Mech, it starts at 16 energy, so that's really nice. That would You'd be able to use your EM 8s immediately after that. Uh, and then Legendary Max, the medium ones anyway, start at 18 energy, so you'd be able to kind of use that still as well. I don't I don't think EM Rifle 8s would completely lose relevance, and you could eventually get 16, and then pair like 8 and 16, and you'd be chilling. But also, there's no real great sniper options until you get to EM Rifle and Rogan. Which is sad, because Gauss Rifle sucks, and Quantum Gun sucks, because they're both auto snipers, and they're not effective. They're not actually effective at range, they're effective at, like, mid-range, because they're, they're, like, more of a brawling weapon. They are a long-range capable brawling weapon, kind of like Pod Gun, but they're not actual snipers. So, probably it is worth doing. If you put it on Redeemer to begin with, that would that would be great for you. Um, furthermore, you probably want like an Aegis in here. If you have Redeemer and Zephyr, then you should have access to Aegis. Replace your Arachnos with Aegis, my guy. Because this is a terrible mech, and you don't have any tanks. And you really need at least one, I would say. You could also do with more speed, but... You know, Arachnos is not fast, so it's not like you're getting rid of anything when you do that. Getting Killshot to replace probably Zephyr at some point when you get it, and then maybe Orion to replace the, the Stalker. Eh, it's just like long-term goals, but I would say EM Rifle 8 is not a bad choice. But then also when you can replace the Arachnos with it, you just... I know, there's, I, think, I know there's Sentinel, which I think is for credits, but Sentinel's not really worth getting. I am not Sean. Should I buy the chain gun 6 and 10 for my Aegis? 
since they both cost credits, but it's a lot of credits, so I'm not sure about it. Each one, both of them total, I think is like one and a half million, correct? That is a, that is a lot of credits. I will agree with you there. Makes my job easier. Mm. I'll tell you what you could do. It would cost you A coins. But I'm fairly certain. Hold on, I have the Macarena database right here. And I'm fairly. Actually, no, I don't need the Macarena database. What am I doing? I know what it is. Another option for you. Just to put it out there. If you're able to. You're able to rank up your ages right now. You could get you could rank it up to five. It would then cost you four hundred and fifty thousand credits to get it to six. So that's a total of like five thousand A coins. Right there. But then also four hundred and fifty thousand credits. That's a lot of A coins, but this is for a mech that you will be using long term, right? Everything else is like four stars, so it looks like yeah, you're kinda of keeping yourself a four star. Which is fair. You probably don't have the blueprints to be able to immediately do this. But what you could do is you could just hold off on getting the six, the chain gun six, and then you can get you just 20 energy. And even just use double graviton. <laughs> you could even just use double graviton to at that point. Because I, I agree that. Chain gun's not a bad purchase. But from the looks of things, you have Nomad, you have Hemlock, you have these other epic mechs. Probably you're going to be moving on the gear hub. You're probably going to be moving into like tier 7 pretty soon if you're not already. Since you do have Graviton 10, I'm going to assume that you have um, tier 7 unlocked. So, you're going to start moving into legendary stuff where a 6 energy weapon kind of doesn't have any value anymore. Because even the medium mechs start at 18 energy, you're probably going to be using 8s and 10s. You could possibly use a 6 and a 12, but you know you, get, you, you even get your legendary mechs to 20 energy pretty quickly, and then the 6 energy is just completely worthless. So that much... For a 6 energy weapon, I'm not sure if it's worth it. You could use, like, a chain gun and a, uh, like a fusion cannon 6, or even a pulse cannon 6, if you wanted to. Because I can understand that this build, even though Graviton 10 is great, it's only great if you have two of them. And it's not going to be great if you have one. It's going to take you a full three seconds to get a single implosion off, which is forever. Especially when you're not able to move, but the enemy is. So, very likely this is not going to do you very much good. Chain gun probably would be better. But I don't know if getting the six is necessarily the best option. I think you could get away without getting the six, is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, if anyone, if your ID is getting, like, removed by YouTube, if you don't see it, that is probably not our fault. So, it would be a good idea to try different things. Like, no one in name suggested. You could... You could um, try to put, like, periods there. You could try to put, like, um, letters there if you, if you really want to. You could put a, any, whatever. But, like, the thing is, I think... Hmm. 
particularly if it's just the number and you don't type anything else. If what you have is a copy-paste message and that's all you send, then YouTube tends to recognize that and it flags it as spam. Send. Bruh. Only four? You could do more than that. Okay, so literally the only difference is EM rifle and nade launcher. Fair enough. So he wants to know what's what I think about his two missile rack builds. I think two missile rack builds is not a great idea. It's much better on Redeemer than it is on Aegis. Use literally you could probably use nade launchers on Aegis and it would do pretty well. But uh, Graviton Beam, actually not on Graviton, not on Aegis, on Bastion, Graviton Beam is fine, but, um, Minigun would be a much, much better choice for Aegis, for sure. Because you have a lot of shield time, right? You got 10 seconds of shield time. So you get the one shot out. Epic reload. You get the one shot out, and then right before... The shield goes down, the dome goes down, you get another shot out. Like, that's a lot of waiting time. Basically, your entire dome is just chilling there while you're reloading. That's basically all it's there for. It's not really... Per and, but, and while you're reloading, you could be behind a corner, right? It doesn't really matter. You don't need a shield there to protect you. You can be around a corner. So, Missile Rack Aegis is not super ideal. Storm Rack Aegis is much better because the reload time is much quicker. And the damage is higher obviously, and it's slightly more of a sustained fire weapon. So Storm Rack Aegis is fine so long as you have uh, the legendary reload implant maxed, or at least pretty much pretty much maxed. But pretty much only in that situation would I say that it's a, it's a good build. Otherwise, I'd have to say Minigun, possibly Nade Launcher is even a better choice for that. What is this? Oh, that's nice. Huh. That. Get him ranked up pretty soon. So yeah, I, I would say that. All right, we are officially three minutes past 12. I think I'll do one more. I think I see like two good ones. Mm, here's okay. Here's one. Should I hold my A coins for Orion or should I purchase Redeemer? I'm not going to look at your hanger. What I will say is, if you only have one fast mech, probably you need Redeemer. If you don't have any like super high DPS builds, then you should probably have Orion. But only if you already have at least two fast mechs covered. More than likely, you're going to want Redeemer, though, because any of the lower tier faster mechs, unless you're, you know, unless you, like, spent some or got really lucky in a playoff or something to get, like, any of the legendary scouts, more than likely you're going to want the Redeemer, just because speed is very important. Uh, I'm looking to change my weapon on my Seeker since right now I got Disc Launcher <laughs> equipped on them. Wow, that, that's... Yeah, ouch. And wondering what kind of weapon is better on them. I will look at you. Uh, Violet's also said... I'm going to try to address this right now. Uh, should I buy Nade 8 or Missile Rack 8? I'll be in Tier 5 tomorrow at the end of the playoff. Have resources for Aegis, Zephyr, Disc 8, and Nade 10. Uh, get Aegis. You could get Zephyr, but it's not super necessary. I'd say get Disc Launcher 8 before you get Zephyr. Between Nade 8 and Missile Rack 8? Probably Missile Rack. Although it's hard to say. Nade Launcher is kind of the better... Nade Launcher might be the better short-term weapon because you won't have any implants for for missile rack reload or anything and 
uh, it has better brawling capacity. But Missile Rack 8 would be the better long-term weapon, probably. So I guess it depends on how fast you plan to progress. Sentry, you have officially been... Oh, the, I did I did give Sentry his justice, don't worry. Okay, here. None of these weapons would be good for Seeker, except for the railgun. Which you could do. I'm not sure that a Disc Launcher Orion and a Helix Scorpius would be a great idea, though. If you have Missile Rack, then that's fantastic. Like, it's problem solved right there. Missile Rack hates on Seeker. Perfect. <clears throat> if you don't, let's say you have, like, nades. Then put the Railgun on Seeker. It's very good. You don't really use it as a sniper, but it's fine. People don't typically do that anyway. Um, put the disc launcher on Ryan. And then maybe put like nades on Scorpius. Or even put the disc launcher on Scorpius and put nades on Ryan. Theoretically, you could use both of these builds at the same time and you'd be fine. But typically what happens is people kind of tend to just continue running with what they have. And long term, I would not say a Disc Launcher and a Helix build would be very good. But I guess you could make it work. Century's been waiting for so long. This is true, but so has a lot of people. I'm pretty sure... There's like at least, I'm pretty sure there's at least like 30 people I have not looked have not looked at. That will be it. I sent a message to you in Discord. <laughs> well, if you're looking for hanger advice right now through Discord, absolutely you're not getting it. But I will look at it later. If need be, we may have to wait. It is what it is. Yes. It is actually impossible at this point. At this point, just, you know, given the number of people who stop by for these, which I appreciate it. But it is actually genuinely impossible for me to look at everyone's hangar. It won't happen. Uh, and I tried to narrow it down by basically saying, you know, if you just put your, you can just put your ID in and that's for the giveaway. That's it. You're chilling. You can leave. I don't care what you do. Um, and that is that, uh, I, I've already kind of decided my, my policy is if you don't ask a question, then I'm not going to look at your hanger because, you know, what do you want me to look at your hanger for? I have no idea unless you tell me, right? Uh, and then we get the and then we get those situations, like I was talking about with AK forty seven, where somebody has some kind of uh, crazy hanger uh, set up, where it's like, oh, that's not my main hanger, or you looked at the wrong preset, or I was tanking and you caught me tanking, like, you know, it's it creates a lot of those situations. So that's that's not ideal. So yeah, doing that cuts out a lot of that, and it gives people with genuine questions, people who are genuinely curious about what they should be doing, because they have genuine questions, um, it gives those people a much higher chance of being looked at. But again, it's not going to be everyone. It really can't. Oh, Master Games already done with the list. Sorry for any duplicates. No worries. Do not worry about duplicates. As always, I will take care of those myself. As a right, probably your ID's in there. I think... I mean, look, absolutely no way 
Master Games is going to uh, go back through the chat, find your message to find your ID, and then look through. If you want to know if your ID is there, he's not memorizing your name. He's not copying down your name. He's only copying the ID. So please put the ID next to, <laughs> you know, you can ask him, this is my ID, is it there? If you really want to do that, if you want to get it uh, out one last time. Actually, what I will do is I will. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. So I'll be back in like two minutes. Everyone, you can you can ask if your ID is there, if you don't think it is, but probably it is. He's been he's been keeping up with it. I think he's been doing a good job. But if you really want to know, feel free to ask. You got like two minutes, and then I'll copy it again in case he edited it, and then we'll go from there. But yeah, I'll be back. Okay. Hello again. It's one in sixty-three chance one of us win. Oh no! So, I mean, somebody wins for sure. Master Games, did you edit it? It does not look like it. If you added anyone, or if you want to add anyone. Please do so quickly. Otherwise, it would appear that I have everyone. Ruffles Wallet will never win. This is true. That is the one thing that loses every time. In fact, the last three times, I lost hard. My win rate is 0.061%. That's like three times better than an event crate. I feel like it's pretty good.
Yeah, pretty much. Okay, let me get this up. Wheel of spin, as some would say. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Alright. I'm going to pull this up on my main screen. Let me go back to... <laughs> I played eight matches and lost them all to bots. Oh no. To be fair though, I bet you had fun doing it. I will bet. Alright, let me ch change this. I've not used this in a long time. So it's there we go. I have like a hotkey thing to change my stream between my screen and the game. It also takes into account the um my webcam, but my webcam does not work on this computer, so it's completely pointless. Anyway, there we go. All of the IDs should be pretty visible. If at any point you want to pause the stream and read all of them just to make sure that yours is there then uh, knock yourself out but we will not be doing that right now so <laughs> right now we're going to get rid of the duplicates because most certainly there will be a few of these that were written down more than once which is fine by the way Uh, all of these... Ah. I really hope that Master Games did not spend too much time weeding out duplicate IDs. Because it's really easy for me to do it myself. There we go. Four, two, uh, yeah. And I would feel really bad. This is probably easier than two, three, nine, three, you know. That one. This one. Should not take very long. It looks like there are very, very few duplicates in here. Actually, there was only like maybe five or six. I did not spend any time weeding them out. Wow. You know, that, what that means is that you just knew who you did and didn't get the ID from already. And, uh, yeah, it was very good. If I lose, will you buy me 100,000 A-coins? Uh, no, because then you wouldn't lose. I don't think it works like that. Anyway... Five zero 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 something. I mean, probably nine five zero zero nine five. Nope, you are not here. Five four or five nine zero zero nine. That is what you call a last minute entry. I'll put yours in, but nobody else is getting in. Because <laughs> I'm not looking through these to make sure that they're all in there. If you just got here, giveaway's over. We're about to pick a single winner. Actually, let me unpin this real quick. Pin this new thing. Uh... I got here five minutes ago, please. Last minute century. Yeah. No, unfortunately, 
it has to be what it has to be. I can't spend the next, because the longer I spend adding people, then the more people join and the more people decide that they want to get added. It's it's a terrible cycle, and I can't do that. I'm very sorry if you didn't have time. But uh, it, it is what it is. Anyway. 76. One person. This is for a thousand day coins, by the way. A little bit of a... A little bit of a twist. So I'm gonna copy that. But I'm pretty sure that'll stay there. Oops. It's already at the bottom. So now... 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. 1,000. That is... Five. Five. And then there is one chance out of 11. One in 11 chance to get 10,000. So. First. I kind of want to see who this is. But you know what? Let's, let's just jump. Let's just jump. We'll see who it is. Please. Please. Not again. <laughs> the, oh no, so close. Look, it was like the last four times in a row it laid it on 10,000. So you still get something. You just don't get the absolute jackpot. Let's... You. Firsty. Oh, he's got a mag... Freaking mini good eclipse as well. That's kind of fantastic. I like it. Okay. Well, I will now. Actually, I'm just going to leave you on his hanger. I will now go through my phone and just do it from there. Obviously, you guys aren't going to be able to see it. This tab. So I'm going to do. It's actually 1200. I say 1000, but that's just because it sounds better to say 1000 versus 10,000. But it's actually 1200. It's 800 and 400. So I will do the 800 first. Guest checkout change. What is the ID? It is 220. Three, one. What I really like about the parent store is that when you do the guest checkout, you search for their ID, so it tells you what the player's name is, which is just great confirmation that you have the right person. Because <laughs> obviously the name will be wrong. So that's very convenient. <laughs> Give me a coins, bro. Okay, so that was the 800, now do 400, guess check out, it remains the same, and it's about done. So there we go. Oh wait, didn't, okay. Thought for a second didn't go through. We're good. All right, so let's go back. That will be it for this. Yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> Were people still typing IDs? It's clearly over. I think it's because they just got here or they aren't paying attention. They have it like muted or something, which you'd be crazy. I mean, you'd be crazy. You'd be surprised how many times that happens. It is crazy. But maybe you would be crazy too, I don't know.
Do you send the acorns to the person? I have always been confused. Yes. This specific giveaway is not is not a thing to um from Plarium. If it's my monthly like five people win a thousand, that is from Plarium. And I give five people a thousand every time. In this case, this is completely my doing. So I send it to them personally. And Plarium has nothing to do with it, which is why I only choose one person and not like five, because obviously I can't afford to do that. But yes, Plarium sends the, the regular giveaway rewards. And I think it might even say that you want a giveaway. In this case, it's just a, it's just a purchase, and that's, and that's all you get. All right, well, that will be it. Appreciate y'all for stopping by. And, uh, yeah, I mean, happy, happy Easter, if, uh, if you celebrate Easter. I will be, I will have a, just a little spoiler, I will have the next Dreamhangers video up tomorrow morning. So there will be that. Otherwise, hope y'all enjoy your weekend. This dream is all about Ruffles having his bank account die so a lucky person can have some acorns. Exactly. It's just the way that it is. Yeah. Appreciate y'all. Take care.